Hello, my name is Daniel Beisted, and in this tutorial I will talk a bit about scale in ZBrush when importing and exporting, issues that can arise and how to solve them. So, if you are working in a production environment, you might have encountered a situation where uh, scales will be lost or rescaled when you import or export between a 3D application and ZBrush. So this happens because of a rare bug, uh, which I myself haven't been able to recreate, but if I figure out what happens, I will report that back to Pixelogic. So let's begin. So when you're working in a project, you are start off by choosing what a unit will represent. It can either represent a meter, a decimeter, or centimeter or a foot or whatever if you're uh, American um, so this character is 1.69 units tall so uh, if I were to work with this character I would uh, use zero scale 1 and this character is 16.9 units tall that would represent uh, decimeters so I would use zero scale 10 for that one and for this character, which is 169 units, <clears throat> I would use ZBrush scale 100. So 169 would represent centimeters in this case. However, I wouldn't recommend uh, using centimeters because if a character moves far away from the world center, you might encounter floating point precision errors during simulation and stuff like that. So I'm going to start with exporting this uh, character, which is 169 units tall, as an OBJ. File export OBJ, but I have my own little add-on here. So I'm just going to export that, go over to ZBrush, and I can import up here. But I got a hotkey, so yeah. Okay, so down here we can see that the star has a default scale of zero. So what's going to happen is when I export, ZBrush is going to adjust the scale and the offset so that the geometry will fit into a 2x2 two two cube, like so. So um, two units wide, two units high, and two units deep. So let's import. And as you can see, the scale has changed. The offset in X is the same, but the um, Y and the Z offset are changed so that the bounding box of the geometry is positioned in the middle. So what I really wanted to convey is that since ZBrush rescales your object, if you have a scale of zero at first, <coughs> If your scale somehow changes, you will need to uh, punch in the, these exact values again in order to have a coherent scale between your 3D application and ZBrush. So for me personally, I uh, that's why I punch in specific numbers at the start of uh, each new ZBrush project, basically. So I always set uh, scale um, 1 if I use uh, meters, scale 10 if I use decimeters, and scale 100 if I use centimeters. If you use the transpose line, you can actually measure uh, the height of the character as well. You can see here that it is roughly 168 units, and the interesting thing is that this is calculated by looking at the scale that is set here. So if I set this to another just random scale, we're going to see that the units have now changed. So if I set it to 1, I will see the um, another set of units. So that's interesting. Now, if I change my scale to 1, 
and zero out the offsets and import the character again. Uh, ZBrush will not recalculate the scale, so it will actually become huge in the scene. So this is actually 169 something units tall. And as you can see, now I have my draw size of my move brush to max, and it's pretty small compared to the character. And even if I turn off dynamic, well, then I can get a proper size. But if I start using the move brush, it's, it's like it stops after a bit. I can't move uh, it further than this. I can like use several strokes, but it's just really hard to sculpt in this um, big size. So that's basically the reason why ZBrush uh, wants to work in this smaller uh, space. So here's the diagram to explain the scale in ZBrush further. So first you might be in your 3D application with a character that is uh, perhaps 169 units tall. And if you set the scale in ZBrush to 100, when you import the character first, ZBrush will scale down the character to 0 0.01. Um, so that will be a lot tinier than the original model. And then when you hit export, then it scales it up by 100 again. So that's basically how it works. Um, scale affects both import into ZBrush and export. So I've been going on about scales in ZBrush, but can I, can we do an experiment that proves that what I'm saying is correct? Well, let's create a cube and just scale it up so it's very big. Now it's even bigger than any of those characters. Excellent. Now I will export this. If everything I've told you is correct, this cube will import and align itself to the center of the scene. And also it will fit into a two by two by two cube. So let's import it. There we go. We can see that it has realigned itself in X, Y, and Z, and it has created a new uh, scale. But how big is this really? It says 208 units here. In order for us to find out exactly how big it is, we need to change the scale to one and zero those out. So now we can see that the height is two units. There we go, two units. And the depth is two units. Furthermore, we can impend another uh, object in here, perhaps the dog. There we have the dog. And I'm going to scale this dog up a bit. Like so. And then I'm, I'm going to hit this unify button, which basically rescales the object so it fits nicely into the viewport. And, dang. and as you can see, if we look from the side, it aligns perfectly and its biggest axis to this two by two unit box. So to sum everything up, there is a rare bug that happens sometimes where your scale will be randomly changed. And the only way to go back and have the correct scale again is to remember the correct values here and punch those in again. Of course, if there's decimals, it's gonna be hard to remember. So that's why I suggest that you set an explicit scale at the start of your project as soon as you begin. So if you work in meters, you set scale to one. If you work in decimeters, you set scale to 10. If you work in um, centimeters, you set scale to 100. If you're working on any other type of scale like feet or whatever, it really doesn't matter as long as you use a uh, an explicit scale and f fit the model and the geometry somewhere around a two by two by two cube in ZBrush. 
in order to make the brushes to work as uh, good as possible. This is all from me. Thanks for listening. Happy seabrushing.